Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UI Path Forward 2024 here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. We have, we're talking about the automation journey for State Street in this next segment, and I'd like to welcome our next two guests, Brandon McCormick, Managing Director, Global Practice Lead, Alpha Professional Services at State Street. Thank you Thank so much you. for coming on Thanks the Cube, me. Brandon. And Manish Bakshi, he is the Senior Manager, Investment Management at Deloitte Consulting. Thank Thanks you both so much. So I'm actually going to start with you, Manish. Can you give our viewers an overview of the Alpha platform? Yep. So it's a. Uh... It's a front-to-back platform that comprises a lot of different applications and services that use various different technologies. And it's a combination of on-prem and cloud technologies coming together to offer investment managers a full view of what you know, front-to-back servicing looks like. And that's where some of the complexity comes in because you're dealing with so many different applications using different technologies. Uh, we needed a tool that kind of helps us test extremely diligently end-to-end -end through the spectrum. And that's where we had UiPath as our tool of choice. And the other thing I would mention is the product itself is evolving at a rapid pace. So it's again prudent for us to continue to make sure that we're testing it diligently as it gets released to our clients because it is being used to manage a lot of money in the market. And so uh, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I run testing, the most exciting job in the business. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, interesting so. conversation yeah, about did, testing. Yes. Yeah, and how, and how much it's changing. It is, yes, yeah, I mean, and that's why we're here today, right? So um, so my team, we're involved in the implementations. We also do post-production support uh, when regression testing is needed, but uh, we have teams of people around the world that uh, are deployed to all the different client implementations. As Manish said, these are big, complex projects, multi-year, hundreds of people. Um, lots of change, lots of um, lots of surprises along the way in terms of people learning as they go and uncovering more details as they as they start to pull back the onion more and more. Uh, and my team's responsibility with with partnerships with the like Deloitte and Manish, uh, who leads that for us, uh, is to make sure that the platform itself is internally tested. Um, and that we partner with our clients to make sure that they're successful in the testing journey that they're on. They're going through an equal um, experience, meaning that they're having an operating model change, a very disruptive, big operating model change, just as much as our firm is. Uh, so as a partnership, we're co-developing the platform and uh, we need to make sure that we're, we're all successful in the testing journey. So Rebecca is a journalist by, by trade and writes a lot about the future of work and obviously has concern about you know, employment and shifts and so forth. And I, I said, well, you've never done testing. Because <laughs> <laughs> they'll be happy to automate testing. They will. But the, but the question is, yeah, I totally agree with you, because I used to do testing, and it's, it's, it's not the most exciting job in the world. But so what do you do with those people? How do you retrain them? H how do they yeah. advance their careers? So I'll tell you, first and foremost, they are very excited. They don't want to manually test just as much as management doesn't want them to manually test, right? We all want to move towards automation. They want to be at the forefront of their job, of their their profession, using the you know first first grade tools, first class tools like UiPath, uh, and uh, and taking some of the mundane, repetitive things um, out of, off of their plate, and uh, and allowing them to go deeper and to really get into what they love to do, which is problem solve. They love to look at the different areas of the platform, work with the subject matter experts and really figure out how do you break it? How do you challenge what was built to see if it will work or if it doesn't work, right? So that's what they love to do and they want more time and more freedom and better tools to be able to do that. So they're not being displaced. That's, uh, I mean, a lot of people talk about that, but that's, we're reskilling. We're, we're making sure that they have access to all the training that UiPath provides uh, to, to learn how to do their job differently and, uh, and, and I'd, I'd like to think that pretty much everyone is excited about that. You're eliminating that, those administrative burdens and the tedium from, yes. their, from their job. The, the, the profile of the role gets elevated so much on more critical and just more smart activities that you're not doing the admin or the mundane or the repeatable things that you are spending a lot of time doing. So that offers people an ability to, again, like Brandon said, you know, think about what can be done more or what we should be thinking about more rather than getting bogged down by, you know, execution related things that the bots can do. So Manish, this is an interesting time for consulting, which is a very, you know, human led 
business, but of course you're injecting, is more of an asset-based business increasingly, and there's more software and sort of a platformization. How are you thinking about whether it's AI, automation, agentic, affecting your business? So, it comes with a little bit of that concern that, oh, it's going to eliminate the workforce, but at Deloitte, we hire the top talent, so we definitely don't want people wasting or spending time doing mundane things. So they look at it as a challenge as well, that if some of the things that I spend a couple of hours doing today gets automated, I can actually focus on high value activities and tasks, and it's a very promising uh, career direction for them as well. So from that standpoint, I think we, it, it will definitely help us with getting a lot of this stuff done much faster, but it frees up our people to do you know, things that they like doing. And the stuff that AI can't do, the, the more the yeah. human, the human yeah. touch stuff. Yeah. That will always be there. You, you will need people who have lived through transformations, who experience these things, who bring their expertise to the table. It's the way you execute could get a little bit more easier or more streamlined because the bots can do that for you. So in talking to some of the folks yesterday, it took a while for the testing automation to really take off. And my, my understanding was that the ROI wasn't so obvious in the early days, but with Gen AI, it becomes more palpable. Can you help us understand that, Brendan? Yep, no, that's uh, spot on. Uh, we are, we're, I would still, I would say that we are still in the early stages of that automation journey. So right now we are at the robotic stage. Uh, we're, we're actually going to speak a little bit later about uh, taking advantage of autopilot and the generative AI capabilities that UiPath has to offer. Um, but um, it, it took a little while to get up and running. We were lucky enough to have a centralized team within State Street that, um, that spearheads AI, machine learning, uh, robotics. So we were able to partner with them and, uh, and tap into the partnerships that they had, one being UiPath, and operate under their guidance uh, and, um, and really go to them with our problem statement and, and ask them, how can we solve this problem? So we partnered with them. We have a strong partnership with Deloitte as well and some other service providers in the market. And, um, and it was, it's a slow start. It is, uh, you really, what I tell people, you have to have your house in order before you can actually start doing automation or you'll just end up automating a whole bunch of random things that don't necessarily make sense and they may not even help move the needle at the end of the day. So we spent a lot of time creating the governance structure of the team, making sure that we had good processes in place, uh, making sure that we had the right people in the right roles and, uh, and really preparing for the ability to scale and doing it intentionally and not just sporadically. So, so having your house in order means governance and skills and with a scale mindset. No, not what a lot of people tell us is data, but, but this is not a data, data problem or is it another so, piece of the puzzle? So it, it is a data problem. I would, I would, what I would use instead of data for us yeah. in, in our situation, uh, the data would be the equivalent of the thousands of test cases that we have that cut across all of our clients, that touch all different parts of the platform. So if that's my data set, I want to make sure that that is uh, something that is rationalized, normalized, it's, it's reusable. So it's not just test team A coming up with their approach on how to test something and then test team B having the same set of test cases, but they're different. So how do you create that common set of test cases that act as your denominator that you can start automating and have uh, reusability and get scale out of that? So there, there, we, we also deal a lot with data. We have data underpins our whole platform. So in terms of data that moves, investment data that moves from our front office uh, applications all the way through to our warehousing and out to the client, we do a lot with data and that's a whole, a whole topic in and of itself. But that was my first reaction to your question. So no, that's a, I appreciate that nuance. And so is it a, a matter of identifying the efficacy of the, the testing and the commonality across so that you can reuse them? It is. Uh, so it's not a one-off test, even though it could be incredibly effective, but it's a one-off, so it's really not applicable. <laughs> exactly. You, you would dial down the efficacy to get more applicability. Yep. Uh, if we just go and automate everything that we currently do manually, we will run a risk of having a high tech debt later on because we haven't gone through that rationalization process. Right? That's why that, that broader strategic vision and how we execute becomes paramount because that tells us spending time up front is a lot more valuable rather than dealing with a lot of stuff that we just transformed 
and we have to get rid of later on. So that's a what, a test asset rationalization exercise? Yeah. It's been a what funny. are the buckets of the uh, what are you, like you know I'm, I'm familiar with application rationalization, yeah. you know, invest, you know, retire, yeah, yeah, et cetera. It, it's the same kind it's, of it's similar, right? Because like we're, we're doing multiple implementations at the same time, all with a little bit different flavors. So for us to understand the commonality and having that one library which is common across all of them or spending the time doing that is, is a valuable exercise. Yeah. And that tribal knowledge is in probably, presumably embedded within the testing team. And what does Deloitte help surface that? And, and Oh, absolutely. Deloitte's, the map? Of I'll it? speak as Deloitte's yeah. end client. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll speak that with their contribution to everything that we do, not just testing. Uh, has been invaluable. And, and just to geek out on you for uh, a minute on your last question, we, we, we mirror what the business does, right? We're testing on behalf of them to make sure that what they built based off of the scope that they gathered off of requirements is working properly. And so we always look to the stakeholders upstream of testing to understand how we construct our approach to testing. And in this situation, we have uh, what's called a, a class of service families and service capabilities within each of those service families that our clients can buy. Picture it as a menu that our clients can shop off of. And so when we look to scale and automate, we're looking at which test cases align with each of those service families, the service capabilities within it, and, uh, and then we have some more foundational work just in terms of uh, transactions that are manager initiated by portfolio managers, uh, non-manager initiated, which is cash and dividends and things like that, um, that flow through the entire platform. And there's your treasure trove of stuff that you need to rationalize and make, make applicable at scale to all clients. So you're, you're aligning your testing protocols and patterns uh, with the business value, which is critical a lot of times the business gets the test, uh, gets the results, and they say, what'd you test? Yeah. Well, that, we don't care about that. I mean, that's like 10% of the problem. What yes. about this other 90%? Right. Um, it's, it's, and, and it used to be kind of throw over the fence and almost like DevOps now, right. much tighter. Yeah, you have to be fully integrated yeah. with, the, by, with the team. Very cool. Yeah. So what are, I mean, as you said, it's early days and it, it's a bit of a slow start. You had to do a lot of housekeeping, even just to make sure you could start this journey. But have you seen any early successes, any, any, any wins to celebrate yeah. and get the team even more galvanized? We have, we have actually. Our first, I, I often go back to the first proof of concept uh, example that we, that we created uh, with UiPath, and that was taking the most basic end-to-end -end transaction through the full platform. And uh, we did a time study. Uh, it took, uh, took about 12 minutes for a, for a tester to manually do that. Logging into each of the different systems, doing all the different validation checks. When we turned that into robotics code using UiPath, it took four minutes. And it took four minutes not because the bot couldn't do it faster, it took four minutes because the platform itself took that amount of time to process the full life cycle. Now mind you, that's not production, right? That's a lower environment, so we don't have full production support, full production horsepower. Um, so that's where the four minutes comes from. But uh, huge win, and we run thousands of those types of test cases on every client implementation, and we all we often have to rerun those same test cases as things change, just to make sure that we don't get different results uh, from the first time it was run. So that was that's that that that's the example I always point to. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing we heard the other day was that in the early days of testing, you could only attack, let's call it 25, 30 percent of the problem. But today, with AI and greater automation you can go after a much bigger piece of the pie. Is that, uh, in the, the, so the business case is, becomes so the, much more compelling. The, the repeatability, of course, is a big as, aspect of it, right? But the coverage part is tremendous as well, that if there are you know, X multiple permutation combinations you can do with different asset types for a simple thing like a trade, right? There could be 200, 300 different combinations that the bot again could do in minutes rather than, again, a person trying to do it in you know, hours or something. And the quality's got to be much, much better. Uh, oh. yeah. You take out yeah. the operational risk or you know, any of that out of the equation completely. Well, and the quality to that point, if you're, if you're allowing the, the machine to do that work, then the person who actually has all that knowledge, that tribal knowledge, they get to actually apply a level of scrutiny that they might not be able to do if they're stuck in the weeds, yeah. right? So it, it's, it, it elevates them to a new view, that allows them to um, to think about things differently and really do that value add work that uh, that Manish talked about. Um, and I'd also say that autopilot. That's I mean we're really excited to uh, to get our hands on that. So to take those testing inputs and let autopilot tell us what the testing landscape looks like to get that coverage 
that we might not fully get today, that's that's game changing. Can you explain that a little in a little bit more detail? How I, I don't quite understand how that's going to extend the value. Yeah, so it's um, it's as Manish said, robots can do things faster and they can do more things uh, at at greater scale. And so if we take a an engine, I'll call it like autopilot, and if we give it the same inputs that our human test team takes today, and we tell autopilot what those inputs are and how to think about them and, and we give it whatever else, whatever other information it needs with our desired outcome, the tool, the engine can then bring all that to life and capture all the permutations that could take a human hours, days, months to do and, and do it quickly. So you right? prompt that with natural language, yeah. maybe shape it, fine tune it, and we just got a preview of a, of a future product release where, where a tester is using natural language communication to, uh, to the engine, like I yeah, use that term loosely, uh, to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to test for client X and I'm going to look at this aspect of the test and can you tell me what we've done on other deals? And then the bot and, uh, and that, whole, that whole engine pulls forward what's applicable as opposed to that person having to do all that themselves. So I've got a question for both of you about the sort of, if everything goes to plan, what is the ideal? As State Street embarks on this journey of automation, including with, including the generative AI too, what does the ideal future state look like if everything works perfectly? You wanna go first? Yeah, let me take this side. So, so the vision that we that we often talk about as a team is uh, in, includes that autopilot, right? You take those same inputs, feed them into uh, a tool called Autopilot, an engine. You create that testing landscape. Autopilot actually creates the test code for all the test cases that need to be run. The bots, which we actually have running in all of our client uh, environments today, will actually take those test cases, run them in an automated way, uh, and it will return the results back to our central utility platform, Jira, which we use to manage all aspects of every implementation that we do, including the development work. And, uh, and then the icing on it is if the bot finds a defect, it can raise its own issue in JIRA and it can bring forward all of, the, um, all of the relevant information that's needed for the person who actually has to figure out what went wrong and how to fix it, to fix it. And it can tell you where it came from. It can tell you what requirement it was derived from, what solution it ties to, what application it ties to. And so all that can be done to free up our team to do so much more on top of that. Love this. Excellent. You want us. Well, Brad, <laughs> you, like, you can feel your hunger, Dave. <laughs> and this is coupled with, like I said, you know, the product is evolving at a, at a, at a tremendous rate. One of, the, one of the best selling points of the product is that it's highly customizable. So we expect to continue to see that evolution happen. So that's why our ability to kind of repeat some of this work and run it at a pace that we want to run it gives us, again, a, a great opportunity to do this work in a in a much robust way. So, an excellent note to end on. Manish, yeah. Brandon, thank you both so much yeah, for thank coming. You for having us. Thank you for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of our live coverage from UiPath Forward. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.